The DI resin is what catches everything the RO membrane misses, and best practice for a majority of reefers is just to use a single canister of color changing resin and change it an inch before it's depleted. The water should always read zero TDS coming out of it. That's all most reefers need to know, but resin is a topic with a lot of nuance, and understanding how it works allows for more advanced solutions that address specific desires mostly related to using less resin or removing somewhat rare contaminants. Be warned that this is a bit reef nerdy, but if you understand the resin topic, you'll actually understand a lot more about water in our tanks that goes beyond just resin. First, how does DI work and when does it not work? DI resin is just tiny beads with an electrical charge that attracts contaminants and effectively removes them. In a mixed bed resin like the ones that are used in reefing, there are two beads mixed together. If you look close, the mixed bed resin has two different colored beads. One of them is called a strong acid cation resin that removes positively charged contaminants. The other one is a strong base anion resin which removes negatively charged contaminants. So that's actually the limitation of DI resin is it only removes things with a negative or positive charge and it will let things through that don't have a charge at all. So your TDS meter may read zero TDS because there's no electrical conductivity, but those things without a charge are actually making it through and not read by your meter. That is why we have all those pre-filters, we have the RO membrane combined to the DI resin because they're all serving a different function to produce ultra pure water. What you might find to be cooler than that is an ion exchange resin like this doesn't actually absorb contaminants. What they do is exchange pure water with contaminants. Most people know that pure water is H2O or two hydrogen and an oxygen. What these resins do is trade contaminants for hydrogen and oxygen to produce pure water molecules. The way that ion exchange resin works is the cation resin removes positively charged contaminants like ammonium. It does that with this method. The cation resin is surrounded with hydrogen ions that have a weak affinity for the resin. However, when something like ammonium comes along that the resin has a stronger affinity for, it releases that hydrogen and captures the ammonium in its place. So the surrounding water no longer has ammonium, but it does have an increased amount of hydrogen. In contrast, the anion resin does the opposite by removing negatively charged contaminants like silica. It does that with a similar method. The anion resin is surrounded with hydroxides, which are oxygen and hydrogen attached to each other. The hydroxide has a weak affinity for resin. When the negatively charged contaminant like silica comes along, the resin has a stronger affinity for silica, so it trades that hydroxide for a silica. Net result is less or no silica in the water, but there are more hydroxides. This is the cool part. The excess hydrogen or H from the cation resin exchange and the hydroxides OH in the water from the anion exchange combine together to create H2O or just pure water. So a mixed bed resin isn't just removing contaminants, it's trading contaminants for effectively pure water creation. Understanding why this works is key to understand why we never want to use the resin to the very end or full color change or the outdated method of changing it after the TDS meter reads anything other than zero. In fact, you'll see why color changing resin is better than a TDS meter alone and it goes beyond just convenience. The reason is once these resins hit the end of their life and read anything other than zero TDS, it isn't just a general mix of contaminants being released, it's a concentrated purge of something very specific. To demonstrate this effect, we took some anion resin which removes silica. Our tap water has about 11 parts per million silica, and you can see to remove the silica to zero or near zero for most of the test. However, when the resin hit its end of life, it didn't just go back to 11, it hit over 25 parts per million and purged silica. But once it was done, it started to drop likely because it was about to purge the next contaminant in line. The reason the resin purges like this is it has a stronger affinity for silica than the hydroxide it started with. However, the resin also has a stronger affinity for nitrate than silica. So when nitrate comes along, it lets go of that silica in favor of the nitrate. One step further, when the resin has a stronger affinity for phosphate. So when the phosphate comes along, it lets go of the nitrate in favor of the phosphate, creating layers of contaminants within the resin based on the weakest to strongest affinity for the resin that all move towards the top but not evenly. This is the case with cation resin as well, where one of the weakest bonds and first contaminants to be purged is ammonium, which is a form of ammonia that has a weak positive charge, but the resin can remove it. Our water has 0.9 parts per million ammonia, presumably from the chloramine, so lots of people have a similar amount of ammonia. Initially, the cation resin can remove it all or near all, but once it gets depleted, it doesn't just go back to 0.9, it nearly triples that during the purge to 2.4 parts per million, and it starts to fall off for the next weakest contaminant to purge. The purge effect is why we suggest swapping the resin once the color change is about an inch from depletion and not trying to ride the razor's edge all the way to the end. And it might also be apparent now why the color change is more valuable to most reefers than a TDS meter. The color change allows you to predict and completely avoid a problem where the TDS meter only detects the problem after it's happened. 
A TDS meter is still wise for membrane performance and to be sure with peace of mind with the DI resin because the indicating dye is not perfect in rare cases. But combined, color change back with TDS meter is the best practice solution. Now in most cases, these anion and cation resins are all mixed together in what's called a mixed bed resin. There's a different way to do it called a dual bed with the cation resins in the first canister all alone and not mixed. A second canister filled with anion resin alone often followed with a mixed bed canister for polish. In our testing, that produced the purest, lowest conductivity water that treats for some of the hardest to remove contaminants. But water quality really isn't the reason to do it this way. The reason most reefers find themselves doing this is because they're burning through standard mixed bed resin really, really fast and they're tired of the maintenance and cost. By far the most common cause of rapidly depleting DI resin is carbon dioxide in your water or something else that's consuming the anion resin. In a color changing mixed bed resin, the cation resin is largely brown and the majority of the anion resin beads contain a blue dye, making them various shades of blue to clear depending on how much that dye they picked up. When the anion resin is depleted, the blue dye turns clear, making the resin appear to turn golden brown. So when you see that blue color change all the way to the end of the filter, it might seem like the resin is fully depleted, and the anion resin certainly is, but in a vast majority of cases, the cation resin is often not depleted. If you have carbon dioxide gas in your water or something else rapidly depleting the anion resin, that blue change will happen really fast. Anion resin depleted, but the cation resin beads might have as much as 90% of their life ends up being pretty wasteful, costly, and time consuming. The solution is a three-stage DI, where the first canister is a full cartridge of cation resin only, the second canister a canister of anion resin only, again referred to a dual bed system, both color changing so it's obvious when each is being depleted, followed with a mixed bed resin for the final polish. Once you do this, it's not uncommon to find that the anion resin cartridge now lasts two times as long as before, and you change out the cation resin between three and 10 times less often. As long as the first two in the dual bed system are maintained, that mixed bed at the end may last years. That brings up the obvious question, why does anyone do a mixed bed when dual beds are clearly more efficient? And why is there a mixed bed at the end of this system? The answer is while dual beds might be more efficient, they don't work quite as well at purifying the water. Something that we tested and confirmed here and it investigates. The reason the dual beds work well, but not as good as a mixed bed, is the dual bed of separate cation and anion cartridges are essentially single pass systems where each filter pulls out what it's going to pull out based on electrical charge at that exact moment. The mixed bed is different. By mixing the beads together, it's effectively similar to creating hundreds of thousands of small little filters inside of a single cartridge, where each bead has an opportunity to change the contaminants form to something that the resin has an affinity for. Mixed beds are just universally accepted as producing much pure water by every industry that filters water. So that's why you don't see reefers use dual beds alone, and they always have a mixed bed after. One note about that third canister of mixed bed resin that's used for polish is the color change is less reliable because it's not obvious if your dual bed system is allowing more cation or anion contaminants through and which one's gonna be depleted the fastest in your mixed bed. There are two types of mixed bed resin that have different dyes and you're gonna pick one based on what you think or experience tells you is going to deplete first in your system. The standard type 99% of reefers use is where it presumes that the anion will deplete the fastest, so the dye is in the anion. But you can get mixed bed where the cations died. We call this pro series mixed bed simply because only a pro with a very specific desire would use it. You could explore both types, but a non-color changing mixed bed in a TDS meter would work well as well. Keep in mind that as long as you maintain those first two stages of the dual bed, the mixed bed should last a very long time, often a couple of years. It's important that if you do implement the dual bed setup, that the cation resin's first, anion second, and there's no use testing TDS between the two. It might seem logical that the first will have removed some of the TDS, and it does, but what it also does is mess with the conductivity in a way that the TDS meter doesn't read it that way. In fact, often it reads higher. Also notable that the cation resin also has a very strong odor to it, so don't get caught off guard when you open it and pack your resin. Another tip here is if you have a lot of DI resin consumption, often has nothing to do with the resin itself or what's in the water, it's actually pressure on your system. And 50% of the time, it's just because the flush kit was left open. Close it and the problem is solved. Now that we've made the case, do you agree with the counsel that we shared at the beginning of this video that 75% of reefers are best served with a five-stage RODI with dual universal blocks, a single 75 gallon per day membrane, running at least 50 PSI and a single mixed bed DI? Change out the sediment filter when the pressure drops, carbon block every 12 months, membrane every three years, and DI an inch before the color change reaches the top. If not, what do you recommend to other reefers or use yourself? Next episode of 52SE, one more source of pollution in the tank that most don't think about, but is undeniable all the same. 
Some of it we can't prevent, but we can account for it and make them a non-issue. Pollution from the environment and other tank inputs, coral warfare, air, hands, equipment, additives, and to a much smaller degree than you might expect, salt mixes. That and the entire 52SE playlist right here.